how does Revelation chapter 19 line up with Psalm 76? Let me show you. It's very interesting. Revelation 19, verse 11. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, that ye may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses and of them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. Great, great slaughter that's going to be coming uh, in the future to those that have rejected Jesus Christ. Go back to Psalm 76. Very interesting tie-in. We're reading through the book of Psalms right now, and I came across this, and I thought, wow, it lines up perfectly with what's going to happen in Revelation 19. Psalm 76, verse 1. In Judah is God known. His name is great in Israel. Judah. Jesus Christ is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Very interesting. In Salem also is his tabernacle and his dwelling place in Zion. He's going to be dwelling there in you know, the nation of Israel, the city of Jerusalem, for the millennial kingdom. Verse 3, There break he the arrows of the bow, the shield and the sword, and the battle, Selah. Thou art more glorious and excellent than the mountains of prey. The mountains of prey. The 200 million man army that gets slaughtered by Jesus Christ at the battle of Armageddon. Verse 5, The stout hearted are spoiled, they have slept their sleep, and none of the men of might have found their hands. Kind of interesting. Uh, you know, you could say it, their hands are all cut off, but I think that the whole thing is they're going to be so frightened, they're not going to be thinking about weapons or whatever guns they have or whatever else. When it's time for them to be slaughtered, the Lord's just going to like that. The stout-hearted are spoiled. Verse 6, At thy rebuke, O God of Jacob, both the chariot and horse are cast into a dead sleep. At thy rebuke. He speaks. Thou, even thou, art to be feared, and who may stand in thy sight when once thou art angry? The wrath of God coming in the time of Jacob's trouble. And its completion there, basically, is going to be the battle of Armageddon. Verse 8, Thou didst cause judgment to be heard from heaven. The earth feared and was still when God arose to judgment to save all the meek of the earth. Selah. Isn't that amazing? Surely the wrath of man shall praise thee. The remainder of wrath shalt thou restrain. <laughs> you know, say, how can the wrath of man praise the Lord? Oh, very simple. The largest military force ever assembled in the history of man. Their wrath of man, you know. They're coming out there to destroy the few Jews that have left, that have fled into the wilderness. You know, you read uh, you know, what goes on basically. Uh, one's taken, one's left, you know, and things like that. Uh, they're, they're not caught up anywhere. They you know, flee. Um, rather interesting there. And that wrath of man... It ends up being praise to the Lord because the Lord comes down one man against 200 million. And the Lord just goes, speaks and slaughters him with his words. 
Verse 11, Vow and pay unto the Lord your God, let all that be round about him bring presents unto him that ought to be feared. He shall cut off the spirit of princes. He is terrible to the kings of the earth. Hmm. The Lord's going to bring an end to all the kingdoms of this world. The United Nations and the Vatican and all the other power things that are out there. The Lord's going to bring an end to it. And He's going to use His Word. How incredible. I thought that was an interesting tie-in there between the two. Psalm 76, Revelation 19. Uh, the Lord's going to be bringing an end to all this wickedness that we see out there in the world. And it's not that far out in the future. So I just want to say that just to encourage you as a Christian. Um, the, the judgment of the wicked is coming soon. Thank you for watching.